Hello, my name's Mark from G-Code Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about 10 G-Codes you must know. So the first G-Code I want to talk about is G00, our rapid travel command. Now, one of the most basic G-Codes and also the one we use the most. So G00, we use to move our tool at the fastest speed the machine will allow from point A to point B. And we can do this in as many axes at the same time as we wish. So we can just move in X minus 100 millimeters, as I've stated here, and it would produce a tool path that would go in a direct straight line to that position as fast as the parameters set in the machine will allow us to go. Now G00, very similar to G01. Now the only difference is we have to state a feed rate when we're using G01, and it's not a rapid move. The feed rate gives us the speed that we're going to be removing material at. So when we program with G01, we need to add a feed rate. And again, we can move in as many axes as we wish, or as many axes as our machine has. Now, like a lot of G-Codes, you might see G00 and G01 shortened. We can shorten G00 to simply G0 and G01 to simply G1. Now, this is because back in the old days, the machines didn't have the amount of RAM as they do now. So every byte counted. So we've done this to give us a bit more space to be able to program our parts and store those programs within the machine controls. So with G01, we use that to cut a straight line and a straight tool path. But when we come to cutting a radius, we would use G02. It can be shortened to G2 also. So G02 is our clockwise radius cutting direction. So as we approach our radius, we would use G02 to perform that radius in a clockwise direction. And if we were going anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, we would use G03. They both work the same, so I'm gonna lump these two together. So the way this works is we would approach our radius um, using G01, and then when we've come to perform the rad, we would use an R value to produce that radius. And we also need to give a feed rate on these lines too. Now, there may be a feed rate active from before, from maybe a G01 line, and that is fine. As long as there's a feed rate active, and this code doesn't follow a G00 with no feed rate. We can also perform cutting radiuses by using I and J values to define the center point of that rad and then the end point of the radius. So there are a few different ways we can program with GO2. And for more information, programming GO2 and GO3, check out my foundation course, which is my introduction to programming with G-Code that you can find on my website at gcodetutor.com. Some more very important G-codes that we use on every single program is letting the machine know whether in absolute mode or incremental. So for absolute mode, we would use G90. So what absolute mode means is that all dimensions are taken from the same datum position. So if we have our datum on the bottom left corner, then all our positions would stem from that datum. Every single measurement that we type into G-code all comes from that zero position. Now when we're programming incremental, all the dimensions come from the last known position of the cutter. So we can take it as a datum shift, where the datum shifts every time the cutter reads a line of G-code. So this way, as we're cutting along our path, each movement will be from the last known position of the cutter and not the datum point. So when we are programming with canned cycles, such as drilling cycles, we need to cancel those cycles after each line. So a can cycle could be something like the G81 standard drilling cycle like I have on this slide. So after any drilling cycle, we always need to finish with a G80. So that's this important G code, G80. It cancels any active cycles. So the reason we do this, so the machine knows that our section of program where we were using a can cycle is over and we're going back to standard machining. Now we don't need to use G80 when we're using multiple repetitive cycles, such as the G71 roughing cycle on a lathe. These cycles act totally differently from the canned cycles. And for more information about that, check out my video with Practical Machinist, where we talk about multiple repetitive cycles and canned cycles. 
Okay, next G code I want to discuss is the G53 G code. Now the G53 G code sets the machine home position. Now we don't edit this position. This is the machine's zero position and quite often where we do a tool change depending on the machine. So G53 is the machine's zero point. So once we finished our sequence, we would move the tool back to the G53 position and quite often perform a tool change in that position. So this shouldn't be confused with the G54, the G55, G56, G57, G58, and the G59 G codes. These are our work shift datum G codes. So these ones, we can decide where they sit in the machine's 3D environment. So normally on a lathe, for example, I would set a G54 at the front face, and then all dimensions from that datum position going back in towards the chuck would be a minus position, and any movements going towards the tail stock or the subspindle would be a plus in the z-axis. So the G54, G55 series of G codes is a work shift datum that we can set ourselves. And the G53 is the machine zero position that we do not change. We can only change that within the parameters, but we normally leave that set as the manufacturers left it. And finally, our last G code I want to discuss is the G28. So the G28 will send our cutter back to its tool change position, the G53 position. But people are often a little bit scared to use a G28 on a single line. So the way the G28 G code works is it lifts up our cutter in Z first to clear any obstacles before it goes back to the machine datum. So it sends our tool back to its home position once it's finished cutting. But when writing any programs, of course, we should first run it in single block with our feed rate right down making sure we know where that cut is going to be next before we push that cycle start button. So you can always check your programs by being very careful at the machine and running through line by line with a slow feed rate and a slow rapid speed so you can predict where that cut is going to be by reading the next position on the screen. So that's 10 very important G-codes that we need to know. Now, if you want to learn more about G-code and G-code programming in general, head over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have a range of courses and some free articles that teach you more about this subject.